Hey guys, welcome back for a server room part 4. Uh, quite a few things have changed, and I just want to let you know that you may have noticed my YouTube channel has changed from Arbiter G Vadim to accomplish the impossible. We're going to start off with the two main racks here. Everything on the left rack is the same as the last video, all the servers are the same, hardware is the same, everything is the exact same on there. The bottom ones are currently offline right now. Power is expensive in the summertime in Texas. It actually went up about 5%. So there's no reason to run the big stuff right now. All my uh, remote needs are taken care of. So there's no need to have them on. Over here in the right rack, I have removed my CTC TV camera system completely. It used to be right here with the night owl system up here. That's completely gone. Um, this was always filled. I'm gonna open it up here and we'll show you what changed. Originally, I had an issue with my 3Com switch died, so, so I switched it out with a IntelliNet and been very happy with it so far. It's been working very well. And up here, still got the UDM Pro and a PoE switch. I have completely made the transfer to PoE Unify cameras. And more to come on that later, and it's a beautiful system, so I'm very, very happy with it. Unified cameras are amazing. Uh, if only they could keep a lot of their stuff in stock. That's about it for in here. The rack to the right is pretty much the same. Nothing's changed too much. Just got the printer and a storage cabinet. This rack has changed quite a bit. So the new items are a set and a whole Cisco lab system here. These are all some real, real old router Cisco equipment, but for learning and doing your own stuff, it's a good start. Uh, especially for, I think it was maybe a hundred bucks for the whole kit. So it was a really, really good deal. And then we got the Cisco PoE switch and several more Cisco routers. And I got a big Cisco router up here with another PoE switch. So um, routers all over the place. I've done a lot. My first project I did with it successfully was setting up a Cisco phone system all via command line so that took me about several hours but finally got it going after banging my head on the desk multiple times so that was fun and below it still the old T1 equipment nothing special there that's been there for a while and then below that's Motorola Quantar and that's also been there for a while so up here it's all the same you may notice now we have yellow raceway going the side of the wall here I took out all my wire rack and the reason I did that is because there was much much more wires coming in so I figured instead of stitching them all in this would be a way way easier and it looks better in my opinion this is what I see a lot of at work so I'm used to this at work and you know, the only thing I gotta fix is that little wire mess up there but it's really not too bad so comes over here and the wires in here I need to get a 90 coming down here because this is driving me crazy they're just not organized the way I want them to be um, so I get a 90 here and that will make everything waterfall out correctly and then coming out of the 90 will be this braid looking tied down so that's the deal with that I th personally I think that looks way way better than the uh, wire rack it looks more clean on top of that we come down and we got some new stuff on the telco wall. Got an old rotary phone by the Bell system. And it seems to be working. Hopefully I can play some dial tone for y'all. So, working pretty well. And it dials, hangs up. If I dial zero, I can actually dial the operator and get an operator on the phone, so that's pretty cool. But uh, I'll just dial a digit here real quick. So, still got the old rotary. That's that. And then next to it is a faster phone, a little easier to dial numbers on it. It's just a touch tone. And then this was the next in the era of phones, so. This one I've had for a while, so I figured, yeah, why not put it up? Below that is also a new add-on. This is my QoS switch, which stands for Quality of Service. 
Uh, it's not doing too much at the house here. I mainly have it because we work with these a lot and it is an amazing point of um, experiment for me in a, almost a lab environment to where I can mess things up and it's not gonna affect anything. So it's really nice to have. Uh, it does, does fairly good at verifying packets coming in from the provider and guaranteeing quality of service. So it's doing this job very well. Um, I will reach out to y'all on this one because if anybody knows anything more about the Sienna systems or knows a background on those, uh, let me know. I would love to know more about it. I do have some questions myself as far as the scripting goes, some of the command lines, and maybe some commands I could use in the future. So if anybody knows anything about that, that would be great. I'd appreciate any of the help. On top of that, we come down here. I don't know if it was in the last video, but the ground bar is now tied into a ground rod outside. So we are officially grounded, we're good to go. It was gonna be a double ground, but I kind of decided against that once I figured out how hard it was to actually get into the limestone outside. So it, that was ridiculous living out here in the whole country. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. Got a new system in for my provider. And the nice thing about this is my fiber now comes directly in from the outside D mark. Uh, my telecom provider actually came out and threw fiber all the way into my server room here, put the fiber termination box up here, and then it goes into this little converter, media converter here, which basically converts it back to um, ethernet and phone line. And then my landline, my rotary, and my other phone run off that box there via a little phone line coming in the bottom. And then the internet is through ethernet and then back into fiber and then the fiber goes up out and back up to the udm pro so um it's a little overkill but i really wanted to use this and get a learning experience with it so that's kind of what i did i just wanted to use this in line with it and it's been phenomenal um so it actually has made a little bit of a difference in my ping and quality of service like i said so it's doing its job the grounds are still the same, nothing has changed with those, and I believe that for the most part is the telecom wall. And there's my unified camera that overlooks the server room. So if I'm not home, I can just check in on the server room, which is really nice. Other than that, that's pretty much all that's changed in here. Everything else is the same, the alarm system is the same and my computer setup is also pretty much the same, so. Um, but yeah, been a, been a fun trip so far. I've been doing a lot of different changes on here day by day and um, gonna be doing some more changes here with power systems later on. Having a lot of power outages here in San Antonio with the thunderstorms rolling through, so it's time to look at other means for backup power. Soon to be more on that and get some crazy projects with that going on. Not too sure if that was in the last video, but that's a stencil I got cut out from a friend of mine and got it painted out and it looks really, really good. So comments to, uh, if anybody wants to guess what that logo means in the comments, that would be awesome. And um, it'd be a fun little trial there. So anyways, just to give you a little overall here real quick. And that's pretty much it. Um, the other thing too, as I would say, if anybody's gonna do a computer room, I may have said this on the last video, I'm not sure. If anybody's gonna do a computer room or office room, anything, very, very wise to have a little air filter in there. This is the cheap one on Amazon. It was like 30, 40 bucks. Um, good little HEPA filter in the back of it. And it's got a UV light. So that, that blue rim is a UV light sterilizer. It just means the light's on. Uh, it's not actually visible UV light yet on the outside for safety reasons, obviously. But uh, that thing is amazing and it keeps a whole lot of dust out of the servers and out of my own computer, which is right there. So I have to dust out computers very, very rarely, maybe once a year. And if I do, it's just because I feel like it, just to make sure everything's clean. So very, very good idea if you're thinking about putting some sort of filtration inside of an office or a server room of some sort, a really good idea especially if you're in a warehouse environment or any other environment you're gonna save yourself a lot of efficiency and time on the back end so 
Uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and call this landline real quick so you all can get a good example of what it sounds like or what it would have sounded like back in the day. Give me a sec here. Okay, calling now. Hung up. Cool. So yeah, it's really cool to have this phone. Like I said, it works fine. Um, every now and again, I get some telemarketer on it that wants to sell me something, but that's about it. Nobody else calls it. Uh, what else is new? So guys, I also wanted to mention, we do have a Discord server set up for the YouTube uh, YouTube channel. Um, like I said, I changed my name. I changed my, my little paragraph that summarizes the channel. So uh, all my new videos will start having links to the YouTube disc to the Discord server, and uh, jump on in there if you guys have any questions about anything. You can always comment. Feel free to comment on anything. And if you got any uh, other talking points or questions you'd like addressed immediately, or or in in depth, the Discord server is a great place to get that done. And there's me and a good group of guys on there that will reach uh, that will try to answer any questions to the best of our ability. And of course, if you guys got any questions about the rooms or maybe some, some helping info uh, or things I should know as far as better improv improving items or better efficiency, I'm always down for that as well. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, sorry about the delay. I'm going to have more and more videos out now that I'm home again. I've been gone for the last almost a year and a half doing work stuff, so it's good to be back. And like I said, if y'all want uh, any particular videos on anything, let me know. Um, I did see a comment. People do want to see the back of the server rack with the wires and stuff in there. So one of these days, I'm going to pull it away from the wall, turn it around, do a quick video of what it looks like, and then slide it back. Because that's a several hour event just trying to get it pushed out and try not to pull any of the wires out of that. So that is yet to come. That will be a quick video. It's not a lot back there. It's just Ethernet wires and a couple of fibers. But I had a guy on the, the Part 3 series ask me how the fibers were routed. So I will do a video of that. I'll just tell you right now that they are actually routed in the right side of it going up. And all the fibers are going through that um, this little inner duct here. Because uh, with the specs that I work with, we're not supposed to have regular fiber just touching anything. We can't secure regular fibers. We're not allowed to, so we have to use this this inner duct type of stuff. So, that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. And uh, once again, comment. See y'all later.